I hope you don't get the sickness. Kurt is a stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some rays like Simba or crack like the beast dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need three wishes Stay-at-home Disney dad My mind is a blank page, eagerly awaiting the Disney musical brushes. Brushes? That has to be a typo. Well, we're off to a good start with this one. One take. We tilt down the side of a building that names every celebrity on this VHS tape. Nelson Eddy, Diana Shore, Benny Goodman. More names. I missed the rest. I can't type that fast, and I don't care. We start with Blue Bayou, Long Shot of the Moon. Well, I don't necessarily really enjoy these musical short compilations. I like reviewing them because after the intro, they do not require me to type at a lightning pace. Also, they usually look gorgeous, and this one is no different. I can appreciate this. We're off through a wonderful forest. There's a pond. Everything is blue except a big white swan or a stork. I think it's a swan. Again, not much is happening except the animators are creating raises for the elves. Pretty sure that was supposed to say themselves. The animation is so good, the animators are making raises for themselves. Not much is happening except the animators are making raises for themselves, but swan meets swan. Gonna guess one's a boy swan, one's a girl swan. Because same swan sex relationships don't usually end well. That was it. Next up, we got a jazz interlude. All cats join in is what it's called. This is cool. We get that pencil is drawing in real time and the characters immediately come to life upon completion thing. This style of animation looks so familiar. I feel like it used to be on like a jar of peanut butter or something. I don't know. We see a young lady toweling herself off and that was probably pretty risque for, Di for old school Disney. Now she's bending over in her closet and you can see her bloomers. Scandalous for 1946, I bet. She opts in an old timey car. They take off, continually picking up more and more kids. There's like eight or nine kids in this car. Isn't that illegal? They pass a cop, so I guess so. But now all is well. They get to what I assume is a sock hop. They're all like swing dancing and there's a jukebox. The guy behind the counter is dressed like a sailor, but he's making sandwiches. The pencil draws a young lady and gives her a big butt. She looks up at the pencil in anger. It flips upside down and uses the eraser side to erase her giant butt and makes it smaller for her. Satisfied, she returns to dancing. Jeez, can I, can I get some of that? Uh, the jukebox explodes or something as records fly at the screen and it's over. Up next, we return to the blue theme. It's Ballad in Blue. We get a long shot of the sky and there's a twinkling star. And that was it. Casey at the bat. Oh my god, I haven't thought about this in 20 years. I think this was on heavy rotation on like after school Disney or whatever. And remember how in the uh, SNES there's a game called Earthbound and there's a weapon in there called the Casey Bat, which is the strongest weapon in the game, but it'll only hit 25% of the time. That's money. Okay, Casey at the bat. We start with a chorus singing that ladies don't understand baseball a bit. They don't know a strike from a foul or a hit. But they come to ogle Casey. All right. The score was 4-2 to two in the ninth inning. Uh, they fat shame the first guy, and he's out. The next guy hits it right into the catcher's mitt, and he's out. That's two out. Then uh, they hit a double, and if you feel like I'm not doing this justice, I'm trying. It's boring. The crowd starts chanting for Casey. They sing, Casey is the man with his eye on the ball, but mostly the ladies. He makes all the ladies go gaga, it's true, no wonder they swoon when he comes into view. He takes the plate and the ladies faint. We all know where this is going. Uh, he lets the first two go by as strikes because he's bored. Uh, then he gears up for the third pitch, he swings, but then we transition to some birds and trees. What happened? It left us hanging. Okay, we transition back and it's raining. There's no joy in Mudville, the mighty Casey has struck out. I don't remember that swerve. Casey cries and beats up the field with his bat in the rain. The end. I remembered that wrong. Uh, Ballad Ballet is up next. Diana Shore's The Dance. I know Diana Shore. Then it says, Two Silhouettes. This one has many names. Uh, the ad, there's an animated heart that splits into two cherubs who open the gate, and we have a guy and a female ballerina that are silhouettes. They dance. Mm-hmm. 
The silhouettes continue to dance. I guess I should note that the silhouettes are like real people, like shadows of real people who dance around these animated backgrounds and interact with the animated cherubs. I, you know, I'm pretty confident I'm not the target audience for this sort of thing, but it is what it is. I can appreciate it. It ends as it began, and the cherubs, 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 am I saying it right? They close the gate, and they reform it into a heart. Next is Fairy Tale, with music told by Sterling Holloway. Peter and the Wolf. I kind of remember this too. Each character is represented by an instrument. Peter is represented by a string quartet. Sasha the bird is a flute. Sonny the duck is an oboe. Ivan the cat is a clarinet. Grandpapa is an old bassoon. The hunter's guns are kettle drums. And band teachers everywhere are losing their right now over how brilliant this all lines up. Okay, great dark snowy forest animation. As you all know, this is my sweet spot. Old timey Disney with dark forest animation. And holy crap, the wolf is terrifying. Grandpa does not want Peter to go out and hunt the wolf, obviously. Grandpapa falls asleep. Peter grabs his cork shotgun and leaves the cabin. Peter is a little boy bumbler. He befriends Sasha and Sonya and they dream about using his cork gun to hit the wolf over the head. Now there's a cat there. And there he is. There's the wolf. They shoot the wolf in the nose with his cork gun. What do you expect would happen? Nothing. No effect. No effect. The wolf chases everyone. I'm sure I saw this when I was five. Okay, the wolf ate the duck. Everyone is crying. Well, maybe this was a bad idea there, Pete. Shot of Sonya waving and walking into heaven. Mm. If you're keeping track, that's wolf one, bumbler zero. Wolf eats the bird. Nope, bird escapes. Cat fashions a noose. Don't do it, cat. There's got to be another way out. Uh, oh, no, he ties up the wolf's tail. They're all hiding in the tree. Wolf gets up the tree and is about to eat everyone. Wolf animation is really scary. But then Russian soldiers show up. Bird spells bonk in the snow, which apparently is Russian for wolf. So they go running. I can't confirm or deny if that's true. Uh, they get to the scene of the crime, though, and Peter and his ragtag group of animals have already somehow captured the wolf. Everyone is happy, except the duck, because the duck's dead. Oh, the bird mourns Sonya, but Sonya isn't dead. Sonya is right there. Or maybe they're both dead. I don't know. The Goodman Quartet presents After You're Gone. We get walking instruments, now dancing instruments. There's a piano. There's hands playing the piano. Now the hand fingers have legs. Now the leg hands are playing the piano. I check my watch. Now two instruments are fighting in a wrestling ring. And now it's over. A love story sung by the Andrew Sisters is up next. Now those Andrew Sisters, they're big wall favorites. They're on all these compilations. We get a hat store and two hats are in love. Okay, enough already. They want to live in a hat box house and have baby hats. But then a little girl buys the hat for, quote, $23.94. And that's a damn expensive hat for the 40s. Uh, that's like a $739.63 hat by today's rates, 100%. Now it's a man about the boy hat. Why would anyone want a hat with eyes on it? Boy hat sees girl hat and tries to reunite, but Tom Foolery ensues. Some smoking vagrant picks up boy hat and takes him into the bar. There's a fight and the guy wearing the hat gets clubbed over the head. But I guess we're supposed to feel bad for the hat, not the guy. I got a line for you Andrew Sisters fans. Quote, they sing, back in the streets, the hat's full of mud. Now in the bar, the hat's full of blood. By the soundtrack, kids. That's a, that's a good song. Mm -hmm. uh, it's catchy too. Blood. Back on the road, the hat has been run over, and now it has holes in it. Someone puts it on a horse head and twist. The horse next to that horse is wearing the girl hat. Reunited, yay! Up next is Opera Pathetic. Not high hopes for this one. We get swirling newspapers. The policeman sings to a woman in a balcony. Some scientists are choking each other. I have no idea what's going on. Professor Teddy Taddy is trying to figure out something about a whale who swallowed an opera singer. Uh, like the band teachers a few segments ago, opera singers everywhere are so happy Disney finally made a short that talks to them. The only representation they've ever had in cartoon land is this, and then years later this. Uh, Seagull tries to help Teddy Taddy. Turns out the whale didn't swallow an opera singer. The whale is an opera singer, and like all opera singers, he nails Mama's Little Baby Love Shorten and Bread. The seagull shows Willie the, the whale... Willie the whale the newspaper about T.T. looking for him. The whale heads out towards his audition. The seagull... Leads him to Teddy Taddy's boat. The whale stands up in the water and the boat is on his head. This is ridiculous. The whale sings. The boat is full of seamen who dance along. The whistle, they whistle and clap when the whale ends, but he wasn't done. Quote, see, Willie was no ordinary singing whale. And okay, I begrudgingly admit that's really funny. Uh, we go to the whale singing in an opera host. Is this happening for real or is this a daydream? Looks real. And it continues. Opera Whale is a hit. The newspapers tell us so. He makes the cover of Time Magazine. One headline is Yank Whale to Broadcast. Yank Whale. Okay. Like the animation of the Opera House, the fans are incredible. Oh, wait. This was a fantasy. The, harp the harpoon firing takes us back to the boat as TT fires it and strikes the whale. Now it's never going to happen because Willie is dead. Willie was a miracle, but don't worry because miracles still sing in heaven. I want that on a shirt. 
Willie sold out in heaven. To be fair, Willie would Willie would have sold out on Broadway as well. I can't remember if that was said in the movie or if I wrote that try to be clever. Well, because selling out, you know, I'm a 90s kid, Gen X baby, selling out. That was the thing you feared most, selling out the whale sold out. Doing any kind of art for extreme profit was looked down upon in the 90s, thus selling out. And you know, it, it doesn't matter. Dead opera whale doesn't sell out, and that's the takeaway of Make My Music. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism and personal appearance.